This week on the Hornet Sports Report, the fall teams continue their march through October. Football used a total team effort literally and figuratively for its fifth straight win. ASU soccer clinched the SWAC's Eastern Division title in stretching its winning streak to six. Volleyball made it eight in a row in taking down a division rival. It's another action-packed edition of the Alabama State University Hornet Sports Report starting now. Welcome and thanks for joining us for this week's edition of the Hornet Sports Report. Alabama State football overcame injuries and a talented Prairie View team to win an overtime thriller last week at the new ASU Stadium. Joined now by head football coach Reggie Barlow and coach, you're missing Daniel Duhart, your starting quarterback. Back up, our center favor gets hurt. Quintarius Toppings, the man of the moment, played well in victory for your team. Yeah, that game was a fun game to be a part of. Obviously, we had... Uh, a lot of guys that had to step up, and uh, it's, it's a blessing and a pleasure to have uh, enough talent when things go wrong, when you have guys that everybody believe in. And QT, uh, being a freshman quarterback, I really like the way the guys rallied behind him and encouraged him on to go out and uh, have a good performance. Uh, we were proud of him, and uh, he did a good job for us. You had some great performances, not only with toppings. Malcolm Cyrus getting the bulk of carries due to the injury to Isaiah Crowell. 301 total yards, 241 rushing. Yeah, Malcolm, I mean, that's who he is. You know, a lot of people uh, are just finding out about him, but uh, we knew what type of athlete he was uh, coming out of high school. Uh, he was overlooked because he's from, you know, Targoville, small town. But uh, he's a tough guy, uh, not very big in statue, but uh, he ran the ball really well for us. He caught the ball well uh, and also even protected in the passing game. But uh, that's what we expect, you know, when, when, when guys go down, uh, the next guy have to step up. And we were proud of him and, uh, and his performance in that game. Those two players, along with Leland Baker, earning conference player of the week honors. Yeah, that was, uh, that was great to have three guys to get, uh, you know, the all swag, well, the, the swag of the week honors. Uh, whenever you can have that type of notoriety in your program, it's a good thing. And uh, Leland stepped up and had a lot of tackles. Uh, you mentioned QT. And then, of course, Malcolm Cyrus having a really big game. You've talked in previous recruiting seasons about the job your coaches do in bringing in talented student athletes to Alabama State. That really showed itself this past weekend. Talk about that. Yeah, I'm awfully proud of our coaches. Um, obviously, there's a lot of pressure to have guys to perform. But uh, in the off season and recruiting season, they go out and they find these guys. And uh, we, uh, you know, look here in Alabama, bordering states. And then, of course, abroad, and uh, whenever you can bring in a guy like QT, you can have a guy like Malcolm Cyrus. Uh, Tovar Allen goes down, but you have a guy like Ron Hall that steps up and start. Uh, Darius Washington, a starting linebacker who's been doing outstanding, he goes down. You got Silman. So that's just a testament to the coaches going out, finding really good student athletes to come here and be a part of the program. And then those young men buying into the vision and when they have the opportunity to step up and make plays. So I'm awfully proud of everybody involved. High scoring first half sets the tone. Let's take a look at the highlights.
So the Hornets and Panthers tied at 21 at the half. We'll be back with the exciting conclusion later in the show. But up next, your Alabama State soccer team is the 2013 SWAC Eastern Division champions. We'll talk with Jody Smith next here on the Hornet Sports Report. Helping wounded heroes start anew, creating new DNA technologies to help keep our communities safe. If you haven't seen ASU lately, you haven't seen ASU. Alabama State University has expanded academic opportunities with new degrees in forensic chemistry, prosthetics and orthotics, applied technology, and microbiology. ASU students and faculty are at the forefront of cutting edge research that is changing lives. If you haven't seen ASU lately, you haven't seen ASU. The hard work. The sweat. It all comes down to this. Who will rise as others fall? Who will lead victorious? Houston will never be the same. Catch the Battle of the Bands and the 2013 Toyota SWAC Football Championship. Who will be victorious on Judgment Day? Welcome back to the Hornet Sports Report. The Alabama State soccer team clinched its first division title in school history last weekend. Joining us now is head coach Jody Smith and Coach Smith. Talk about the process of building this program into a champion. Well, we've come a long way since when I first started. And, uh, you know, the first thing you need is support from the university. And we've gotten that over the years uh, from when we first started in our facilities to where we are now, now is night and day. The, uh, you know, the facilities are what kids want to play in and the university's made the commitment to get there and uh, provide the facilities that we need to be successful. And then once you have those things, getting the kids on campus, seeing that commitment is what b brings them to the university. As we look at highlights from last week's win over Southern, you've won matches in a variety of ways, sometimes high scoring, the most recent wins, 2-1, 2, to one, two nothing. you grinded out with defense. Talk about the versatility of your team. Well, you know, they always say uh, defense wins championships. We're fortunate here that we have players that uh, are very capable of scoring, and we've done a good job throughout the season of putting them the next opportunity to, uh, to score. Uh, but here lately, it's been our defensive end that uh, has really come through for us. Uh, Starting with Kylie in goal, she's made some brilliant saves across our back line. Everyone's done a nice job of kind of buying in, and we're starting to see the success of uh, defending and maybe where we need to be early, but everything's starting to come together now. Among your standouts this season, freshman Leah Lewis, who leads the conference in goals scored and ranks in the top 10 nationally in points. Yeah, she's come in and done a brilliant job for us. Her and her sister, Ariella, who uh, is probably responsible for her getting the goals because she's feeding the ball a lot of times. But uh, we saw them out on the recruiting trail for about three years now, and uh, they've got a great synergy together. They're, you know, obviously they're twins, so they, they work well together and they're finding each other. Uh, out on the field, but for her to come in as a freshman and make the contribution she's made for our program has definitely put us on the map. Rare is the opportunity that you can clinch a division title with still contests left to go. What will you focus on in the next two weeks prior to SWAC championships? Well, we need to maintain our fitness levels. So we got to make sure that we can play a complete 90 minutes every game out. Uh, again, we want to focus on the small things, and you know, small things. If you'll, if the small things all add up. You're doing the, all the small things well. You'll have success in the end. So we need to make sure that uh, we don't get careless. We take care of the ball, uh, and certainly it will give us a chance to uh, kind of solidify what we're looking to do as we go into the postseason. Alabama State soccer is clinched number one seed in the SWAC Eastern Division. Up next, we'll talk about another number one, ASU volleyball. Up next on the Hornet Sports Report. Follow the Hornets wherever you are. Get the latest news on the official website at BamaStateSports.com. 
Plus, download our free mobile apps for Droid and iPhone and follow us on social media on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Visit BamaStateSports.com forward slash social media. Pointed Pride 365 is a new giving campaign aimed to support Alabama State Athletics. For just a dollar a day, you can make the difference in the lives of our student athletes. For more information and to make a donation, visit BamaStateSports.com forward slash Pointed Pride 365. Welcome back to the Hornet Sports Report. ASU Volleyball has stretched its win streak to eight games. The most impressive win last week coming against perennial champion Jackson State. Joined now by head coach Penny Lucas White. And Coach White, your team rose to the occasion in a great atmosphere in Lockhart Gym last week. It was a wonderful atmosphere. I'd like to give a shout out to Coach Reggie Barlow for allowing the football team to come and spend uh, that first set with us. That really set the tone to have them wrapped around the gym in numbers. And uh, it was a great atmosphere. They did. They really did. And I think one thing that we try and make sure that we create the same situations in practice. And when you create those situations in practice and they occur in a match, it's not new. There's no reason to panic. And we knew, you know, Jackson State is a fighter. They have a tradition of winning. And those girls, were. we didn't know what to expect, but we knew they weren't going to lay down. Um, and so that was the thing. I thought that they made a great adjustment in set two. We missed some really important serves, came back in set three, and just took it to them. So that was really, really good. It's early in the season, you're 3-0. and I know Coach is always looking forward. Can you put this win into perspective at this point in the season? I just think it's an early win. It's nothing for us to count on. I think we were in our house. I think we had a great crowd. The seventh man always helped. I think it matters when we go on the road, and that test is coming this Friday night. Let's take a look at last week's highlights and a great win over Jackson State. Coach White, based on last week's wins over Stillman and Jackson State, a trio of players once again earned Swag Player of the Week honors. They did. Um, and like I said last week, take a look at Tierra Kelly and Latoya Ellington on the right side. They hit a heavy, heavy ball. My most excitement is how Chelsea Scott rose to the occasion. We have been really working hard with Chelsea. We're getting her, her hitting arm up and, and really swinging through the ball. She, she showed phenomenal athleticism and she stroked a couple good really heavy balls I feel very confident and calm going into uh, the future because I felt like it was our left size that we needed to get up to par but our middles are gonna always show up our right sides are stable and strong blockers our left sides have come come into their own now so I'm very pleased and with that I also like to say none of that can happen without your so-called quarterbacks I have two setters who's delivering the ball day in and day out. And you can't have that many hitters and that many leaders in the swag unless you have somebody doing something right and delivering the ball. You mentioned prior to our highlights, the match this week. If it's checkers, jacks, whatever against Alabama A&M is big. Both teams 3-0 and going into this match. Talk about 
Friday night's match. Well, Alabama A and M always have a wonderful atmosphere. The gym is always packed. I think what they're going to do is bring their seventh man because they're going to have basketball playing at nine o'clock right after our match. We're taking notes, A and M. We got you on so, that. So <laughs> that's right. So we're ready to uh, be able to play in that type venue, and we'll create that same atmosphere in our gym this week doing practice. Uh, going into the match, I know we got to start off really fast. I think we have to run our offense. They're a little bit smaller on the wings, on the pins, much bigger in the middle, but we're going to try our best to exploit them on the wings, or what we call it is the pins on the outside, and um, try and just create our offense and make things happen. Magic City Classic volleyball style this week up on the hill. Lady Hornets taking on Alabama A&M. Up next, we have the compliance tip of the week and more. You're watching the Hornet Sports Report. This week's Compliance Tip of the Week is about sports wagering activities. The following individuals shall not knowingly participate in sports wagering activities or provide information to individuals involved in or associated with any type of sports wagering activities concerning intercollegiate, amateur, or professional athletics competition. Staff members of an institution's athletics department non-athletics department staff members who have responsibilities within or over the athletics department. Example, chancellor or president, faculty athletics representative, individual to whom athletics reports, staff members of a conference office, and student athletes. Compliance is everyone's responsibility. Remember, ask before you act. That's this week's Compliance Tip of the Week. Welcome back to the Hornet Sports Report. The Alabama State cross country teams had strong performances at last week's always challenging Coach O Invitational hosted by Troy. The ASU women's and men's teams each finished in second place with three top 10 finishes. For the women, Artreya Lassane, Paige Rankin, and Tatiana Etienne finished second, fourth, and 10th respectively. On the men's side, Andrew Cuckoo, Bryant Brown, and Tevin Avant Play second, sixth, and eighth, respectively. We definitely was excited about the uh, places that we had at, at Troy University. We had some good quality competition down there. Wasn't a lot of schools, but the quality of the competition is exactly what we needed. It gave us a clear indication of where we are at this point. The Alabama State basketball team held its first open practice session last week in the annual late night madness event at the Dunn Oliver Academy. The women's team took to the hardwood first, playing a pair of 25 minute halves, which played the experience and versatility of the ASU roster. The late night event gave head coach Frida Freeman Jackson a good gauge of where her team is at the midway point of fall practice. I thought tonight's performance was pretty good. Anytime you can put um, your entire team out on the floor at the same time and you ain't running clock and you score 54 and 50 points, I thought that was pretty productive. Some of the things that we're going to have to address, we got to play better defense and we also got to uh, eliminate some of our turnovers and turn the ball in. The men's team capped off an exciting night of pointed athletics with his first open scrimmage of the fall. The athleticism of the young but talented team was evident as Alabama State continues to work toward the November 8th season opener at Illinois. Head coach Lewis Jackson is continuing to mold his new players into basketball the Hornet way and like the enthusiasm his team displayed last week. Well, I thought we had a lot of effort, a lot of energy uh, for the better part of the game there. You know, first time the guys get an opportunity to come out and play before an audience and uh, I thought they played hard. They shared the ball for a good piece there. For a minute there, the white team was getting blown out, but they came back the second half and fought and got into it. Uh, I like the energy, I like the effort. Of course, we got a lot of things we got to work on, but overall, you know, I was pleased with it.
helping wounded heroes start anew, creating new DNA technologies to help keep our communities safe. If you haven't seen ASU lately, you haven't seen ASU. Alabama State University has expanded academic opportunities with new degrees in forensic chemistry, prosthetics and orthotics, applied technology, and microbiology. ASU students and faculty are at the forefront of cutting-edge research that is changing lives. If you haven't seen ASU lately, you haven't seen ASU. Welcome back to the Hornet Sports Report as we talk second half highlights versus Prairie View. And Coach Barlow, Malcolm Cyrus's 80-yard touchdown run sets the tone for another exciting finish of ASU football. Yeah, that was an explosive run. Uh, we, we call our Packer play where we get uh, two of our big guys there on the edge pulling, and uh, they create the lane for Malcolm, and uh, he broke a tackle too, and then he's uh, off to the races. So uh, also we had some really good blocking on the perimeter, Jamel Johnson, Jarrett Neely, Nehemiah Henry. Uh, those guys did a really good job of blocking on the perimeter, and uh, uh, which allowed Malcolm and Crowell and and uh, Rodney Cross to have the success that they, that we did have in the running game. Sixty minutes, not enough to decide this one. Let's take a look at the second half highlights. Hornets pull off a 48-42 overtime winning Coach Barlow. This bias comes traditionally right before Major City Classic. It seems very appropriate after seven weeks of football and all the injuries for it to come at this time once again. All right. You hear coaches all the time say, oh, this bye week is coming at a great time. And uh, in this case, it's really true for us. Our guys have been going after it since August the 2nd. And, you know, it's a challenge to, to, to have the mindset to go out every day to practice uh, when you're sore, when you're fatigued. And, um, Really admire the guys for that, and this week here gives us an opportunity to uh, to kind of reflect back on what we have done, and also to to make some changes, and then also to get guys healthy, and then finally to you know get our mind right as we continue to go uh, down the stretch for the rest of the season. We'll talk a lot more about the 72nd State Farm Major City Classic next week, but Coach Bowler, talk about where your team is right is right now, five and two overall. 5-1 in conference play, right on the heels of Jackson State. Pretty much the best position you can be in after the 0-2 start. Yeah, we, we talked about 
and I, I, I admire the guys for um, staying in the vision and, and continue to work through the process when we started out 0 and 2 and uh, talking about turning the mess into a message and, and just being able to overcome adversity and, and they bought into that. Uh, they, they never faltered, you know, that there was never any uh, panic in these guys. Uh, they continued to come to work uh, every day. And um, uh, that's why we're at, you know, at, at our record right now. We've ran off five straight. Uh, you really want to go into the bye week uh, with the win. It, it makes everybody uh, that much happier. And uh, I think we are in a good place, and the guys are excited about our next opportunity uh, as we do get a little rest. But uh, we're looking forward to the remainder of the season. Well, it's a good chance to get some rest and recovery this weekend before the 72nd State Farm Magic City Classic. We'll talk about that game and more next week on the Hornet Sports Report.